Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Donna and I hope that you subscribe because I help you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. Today I am going to be getting into a PHS x-ray positioning critique evaluation criteria, all of the above. So I hope that you all stick through this video with me and watch all the way until the end because even throughout the positioning section I give very very helpful tips and tricks in order to make sure that you get all your anatomy on there and that everything is good so let's get into today's topic i'm in need of an x-ray so the first thing that we're going to consider is our tube setup the direction of the tube what the tube is looking like because all of that is the start to a good examination right we can't just have the tube in here anyhow so we're gonna have our tube turned horizontally so the beam is going to be going sideways and when the beam is sideways onto the erect bucky because that's the bucky we'll be using when it's erect when because the patient will be standing the beam hitting horizontally is called a perpendicular beam because it forms a 90 degree angle with the bucky and the image receptor. The tube is directed towards the erect bucky and we're going to pull it back or forward depending on where the tube was in its starting position to a 72 inch SID and your SID is your source to image distance. The distance between the source of the x-ray to the image receptor. So after we already set our SID we need to put in the image receptor or the cassette or the detector so I'm gonna be you know, moving around between those three terms, right? Or the IR for short, image receptor for short, right? So when we're using the IR, we need to consider the size of the part that we're looking at. And throughout radiography, each anatomy, each thing that we're looking at has a different recommended image receptor. For the average adult, we use a 14 by 17 inch image receptor and that will ensure that we get everything that we need to see within the thorax of any chest cavity. We place any cassette crosswise because most people are cross, well will fit cross as an x-ray unless you're really tall and lean or slim and tall then you look at the patient and you can estimate whether or not you would need to put the cassette crosswise or lengthwise. A recommendation would be that you, when you turn the cassette crosses and you put it in, it's important that you allow the cassette to sit higher up so you lock it in our case at the 11 mark, right? So that the patient doesn't have to hyper extend the neck in order to reach to the top of the cassette, in order to clear the head from the top of the cassette. So you put the cassette up as high as possible into the bucky and the cassette holder section. And you make sure you have all your gonads shields and everything ready. Another thing that you would need to consider is the literal technical factors, the exposure that you're going to use for the patient. On average, we use a KVP of 105 to 120. In my last video, I actually went through the discussion of KVP, the explanation on what it is, how it is applied in the tube, therefore why it is important, and how it affects the image in terms of contrast, what contrast is, the type of contrast, and things to look out for. I went into a lot in that video. So I will link it in the icons above so you all can check that out. Um, in terms of the MAS, for chest x-rays, you keep it fairly low, so I'll estimate between 1.8 to 2.5 depending on the size of the patient. And now we're going to get into the patient's and well the path position. We like to know that the patient is already going to be erect, right? Standing, they are likely ambulatory or walking. Some cases the patient might be in a wheelchair but they'll be able to stand for a little while just so that they can get the extra taken. In other instances, maybe they can't stand for too long or they're dizzy because a lot of patients come into the, uh, the accident and emergency or in general into the department and they are really dizzy or lightheaded and they can't stand for too long. So we can put a chair but just make sure that the back of the chair is out of the way and they can sit and turn to face the bucky. Long story short, the patient is going to be in the erect position for this PA chest x-ray. So don't let the patient stretch their head too high because some patients when you tell them raise their chin they like to go back all the way. No, we're not doing that here. So long story short, just have the chin raised slightly and rest on top of the groove of the bucky because usually the bucky will have the little curved groove to rest your chin on. 
Next, the patient will need to roll their shoulders forward and this will help the scapula get out of the way and it will move laterally away from the chest wall and you know that you had a great position in terms of the rolling of the shoulders because in the x-ray you wouldn't see the scapula within the lung field, at least barely at all, right? And this is important because sometimes if the patient has a pneumothorax, the scapula could be in the way and that will kind of block things a little bit so we really want that out of the way right so uh, one of the ways to do that is to have the patients put their hands on their hips or the lower hip area and roll or curve the arms forward the other way I would have would be to have them like if they can't assume that position it would be to have them hug the board in a way while rolling the shoulders and the next way would just be to have their arms or chest because some people can't even get themselves into that position for whatever reason. So those are the ways in which you can help the scapula roll and get out of the field with any chest. Another tip, when the patient rolls their shoulders, they usually tend to raise them really high. I have no idea, like this is so unnatural for me. But a lot of them do, so you want to make sure and tell them to drop their shoulders and make sure and communicate. Communication is so important in x-rays. You need to tell them to keep their shoulders low, relax it when they breathe in. Some people like to breathe in with their whole body, you know, they don't practice diaphragmatic breathing, which is the best breathing, by the way. They like to raise and raise your shoulders, and then when they raise all of this, your APC is cut and you need to repeat the x-ray, right? So tell them to relax and you just gently press down on the shoulder so they know that okay I need to keep it down here. A tip when it comes to the shoulders as well in terms of relaxing it, when they relax their shoulders take a look at where the shadow of the collimation light where the shoulders lie on that shallow and estimate about an inch that way even when they breathe in you're sure to get everything and the shoulder or the apex is not gonna cut off so be mindful of where the shadow or the light field the collimation field begins at the top and of course you're centering the patient with their mid sagittal plane towards the center of the image receptor we don't want them off to one side because i could cut the lateral well either lateral wall as well as in general it could mess with the if you're using aec it could mess with the automatic exposure controls and it might pull one way because it's finding a lot of density on this side and A on this side. So you know you need to take all of that into consideration as well. And just in general, you want a good image, a good looking image, an aesthetic image as well. And as for the other centering points, we are centering at T7, which is in the mid chest level, the mid chest area. A good way to estimate it, of course, okay, for not if you don't even want to estimate, like we're looking at these bony landmarks. You're feeling for the inferior border or the little base, the little point at the bottom or the end of the scapula, right? The base of the scapula. You'll feel for that point and that will indicate the level of T7. Another thing you can do, well this is a tip, right at the armpit is usually when you roll the scapula where the where that area would lie so you could estimate right here another thing is to consider the nipple line. You don't want to estimate too much on the breast because you know the women are different. Some Boobs will hang, some will hang a little lower, some might be up there, but you don't want to solely just estimate on that. So I think a good point to look at would be at the armpit. That's like a perfect level to estimate the level if you just want to be sure. And you can see it from the back as well because you know where the armpit lies, right? So a big, big tip that I have for you guys, and this is a tip I use all the time, especially when you want to consider, like you're not too sure how to place the cassette. Yes, you're looking at the width of the chest to average if it will fit. Another thing you need to consider is lengthwise because you don't want to clip the lower portion of the anatomy, right? So what I tend to do, and you all see it in my little display, my little video explanation, you need to feel for the, well, you don't need to, but I recommend that you feel for the lower custom margin. That helps me so much. And a lot of times it actually lies about three inches above the lower custom margin. So if you palpate for the patient's lower custom margin, you see, okay, wow, this patient has a very long chest, a very long thorax or thoracic cavity. I think I need to put the cassette lengthwise. You would know for a fact that, okay, the chest is fitting, it's not gonna cut, and we're good to go. So we know now about our positioning, we have everything down packed, we're good to go. The next thing we need to consider is our evaluation criteria. When we're about to expose, we perform the exposure at full inspiration. Again, communication is important, so I recommend repeating the breathing instructions at least two to three times, because if you chance it on the first time, 
sometimes the patient doesn't hear you sometimes they just not being mindful of what going on they're in their own world sometimes they're lying between consciousness and unconsciousness so they really may not be knowing what's going on um they need to just consider that a lot of patients as i say breathe with the chest so you see the rise and fall of the chest if they aren't responsive you can look for the, ri the rise of the chest and estimate your exposure at that specific point but you need to be at full inspiration and you would know that you are if it gets about i believe it's nine to ten of the ribs above the diaphragm so yeah you could look out for that as well so that way you know that you had a good amount of inspiration that the patient took a really nice big breath you want to make sure that there's no rotation on your chest image your chest x-ray and in order to do so you can take a look at the sternoclavicular joints right here between the sternum and the clavicle and you would see if there's too much space onto one side that would indicate that the patient was rotated you can also generally look at the length of the clavicle because some would one would look really really foreshortened and the other would look really really long so that would be an indicator as well if the patient was rotated as well as looking at the spinal processes making sure that they are at the center of the thoracic vertebra that will also indicate whether or not the patient was rotated or not and we want it to the center some patients have um scoliosis and stuff so that might look warped but you must know if your image is rotated just based on looking at it again you're looking at the scapula to ensure that the medial border of the scapula is away from the lung field and you want to have an like, appropriate exposure in which you're seeing all the important details of the lungs you could faintly see the thoracic vertebra behind the, the heart shadow and everything is well exposed and you're good to go as for the area that you want to make sure you get you want to have both apices on the image and if the patient is tilted one of the apices of the lungs might cut so you want to make sure that the patient is straight standing straight even if they have scoliosis you could straighten them up momentarily have them assume that position it might feel odd to them but you know it works so you can have them assume that proper position so that the both apices are in the field the collimating to ensure that you get the lateral chest wall i recommend collimating at the skin border or using the armpit as a reference because sometimes patients might be a little bigger and then you collimate at this the skin border and you have like all this on each side of just skin when you can collimate some more so i recommend looking at the the armpit to kind of give an idea of where the where the, the patient's um, chest wall would end or begin or whatever, right? So that's one of the things. And as for the bottom border or the lower border, you want to, of course, make sure that you have your costophrenic angles in there. You don't want to clip the diaphragm in any other way. So that's also something that you need to look out for to know that your x-ray was well taken. Lastly, well, we already know we're using our x-ray marker. So you want to position your marker. For a PA image, remember the, the extra beam posterior anterior is coming from the back posterior to the front anterior. So your marker must also be in that PA position. So you're going to turn it to using your left marker, presumably. Make sure it's on the correct side of the patient and you turn the marker backwards so that the L looks backward to you or you just can't see the L because you already turned it backwards. And that's where you're sure that you have correct marker placement. And you want your marker out of the way, you don't want it blocking any important anatomy. So I always like to put my marker just out about where the shoulder joint would be. Um, well, not in the joint itself, but just above there. So you know that it's away from the center. I was watching myself in the viewfinder. So you know that it's away from the, the chest wall itself. So next, I'm going to actually be going through some chest x-rays. So I'll be coming off the screen just to show you some things to look out for. Things that could have been done differently with these chest x-rays that I randomly find on Google. So that you know, okay, this looks off. Or I will know that if I see this, that means that this could have been done better. Now, not all the time you need to actually repeat an x-ray. Sometimes it's of diagnostic quality for what the patient, what the doctor, sorry, is looking for. For example, cardiomegaly. If you clip the costophrenic angle a little, you're not going to repeat that because you see in the entire heart, right? Because they're measuring the, 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 different, the distance between both sides of the heart and seeing that the heart doesn't take up more than a half of the, the lateral chest wall. Right? So in some cases, you're not going to um, repeat the x-ray. What you need to do after I watch this video is actually check out my blog post on that. Things to consider before you repeat an x-ray so you'll know what you need to check for, what you need to improve on, and how to not make the same mistake twice. Anyway, let me get off the screen and we're going to get into those x-rays and things that you should look out for. 
So this particular x-ray that we're looking at is an example of a really good chest x-ray. The marker was on there, it was placed um, in post-processing, which is fine. I think a lot of times we need to, as much as possible, try to have our marker on before we make the exposure because that would help avoid little mix-ups or any confusion when we post-process. But nevertheless, the marker is on there. We see that the scapula is away from the field of view. The only thing that I would make note of is that the centering was a little bit too low. But again, we see all that we need to see. So this is a very good chest x-ray. For this next x-ray, we see that the patient has a pacemaker in. We see a cool little, probably like a, a marker that was cut with a piece of lead. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so this x-ray was good. We see the patient try to roll the shoulders as much as possible. And we also see though that there's some blunting of the claustrophrenic angles, and that would be due to fluid in this case, because the patient seems to have some fluid in the lungs. Nevertheless, this is also an example of a good or decent chest x-ray. Uh, the center could have been a slightly lower, or maybe they could have opened up the collimation um, just a little bit more lengthways just in case they needed to see any more detail but i think that apart from the obvious cardiomegaly and whatever issues the patient might have that they need to see or that they would have seen sorry everything that they need to with this x-ray so this is also a really good x-ray this x-ray is pretty good as well there isn't a marker on it but you know maybe it was gonna be put in later on uh, they could have collimated a little bit more because we see we extended all into the humerus um, So it could have been closed in a bit laterally But again a pretty good x-ray with nice exposure because we see in the lovely lung markings and all of that The hyalur region everything is pretty clear so we're good to go This next chest x-ray points out uh, pathology there but besides that We see that the marker was cropped out a bit however at the bottom, if we watch clearly, we will see that the costophrenic angle, specifically the left, well, mostly the left anyway, was cut out. So the center could have been lowered a bit, as well as the lateral collimation could have been opened out widthwise. Maybe this could just be the way that the photo was taken, but this is just an example of things to look out for. For this last actually that we'll be looking at, it's an AP or an anterior posterior view of the chest. Um, so it doesn't necessarily apply in this case since we're looking at PA views of the chest. Um, the patient has a really bad pneumothorax, by the way. We see the collapse lung there. Um, that aside, though, I really wanted to point out how the patient was tilted. Because if a patient is standing and they twist or they have scoliosis, or for whatever reason they're not standing straight, you could risk the fact of clipping or cutting the costophrenic angles or the chest wall on either side due to how they twist and based on how close in your collimation is. So this is just an example of things to look out for. Maybe the patient could have fallen to the side a bit, but the image was still acceptable based on the pathology that they wanted to see. Again, another thing to look out for when you are taking your x-rays. So y'all, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that this was helpful. I had a really good fun time making it. It was interesting. Me alone being in the extra room trying to set up um, a clip for you guys to see. It was very awkward as well. But I hope that, you know, it, it met you and you was able to understand it really well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.